I made an FPL team with both Haaland and Salah in it, and it's actually good. Welcome to FPL, mate. My name is Dan, and I thought this would be a fun challenge video to make, but now the team is so good, this is my actual team draft right now. Okay, I'm super excited to share this team with you guys because I think you are going to like it. This team actually cost 99.5 million, which means we have 0.5 million in the bank. Yes, not only do we have Haaland and Salah in the team, but we also haven't even spent all our money. That is how good we are right now. We're using a 3-4-3 formation. Still fancy this one as being the best one. We're using rotating 4.5 defenders, which is very useful to have that backup option on your bench. And guys, if you want to join the mini league for this season, the new code is in the description or on screen now, but we need to start picking some players. First of all, in goal, we have currently gone for the 4.5 million goalkeeper, a Henderson. Now, this could also be Johnston, depending on who we think is going to be the main starting goalkeeper for Palace, but I personally think it is going to be Henderson. Hopefully, you get some more information as we approach the game week one deadline, because honestly, it's pretty hard to find a 4.5 million goalkeeper at the moment. Verbruggen is injured. Well, Sanchez, Petrovic at Chelsea don't look like they're going to be super nailed on with Chelsea looking to get a new goalkeeper. You could go for Areola, but not totally convinced by West Ham's defence. And Sa at Wolves, terrible fixtures. So where do you go for 4.5 at the moment? I'm not sure. And one of the reasons I have saved 0.5 in the bank is so we can potentially upgrade this position to Pickford or Pope if we don't get our definitive answers around many of these 4.5 million goalkeepers. Guys, if you've got any suggestions on who you think is the best 4.5 keeper at the moment, then please do let me know because it seems to be a tough one at the moment. But I would love to go for a Palace one because Palace, fourth best defence last season with 10 clean sheets and they look to get even better in the second half of the season. Hopefully they can continue that form in the new season with some pretty good fixtures to open up. Only Chelsea being that difficult one in game week three, but save points potential at least there. Let's see. Moving into defense, we have got Cavario. Uh, ended last season playing as a very advanced left back. A uh, left winger really is a better accurate description of where he was playing for Man City. Can he continue that great attacking form that he did show? Because he looks unplayable, unbelievable. So I think hopefully he's going to be able to do that again for the new season. The fixtures after game week one are pretty decent. We've got Ipswich, West Ham and Brentford there. And when we have a player like Gavardio, you have the potential for attacking returns. So you're not just depending on clean sheets. Although saying that, looking at some of these fixtures, there could be clean sheets sheets here as well. The alternative here is to go for a Saliba or Gabriel guys because I have to warn you now there are no Arsenal defenders in this current team and my thoughts were that Arsenal play Villa, Spurs and City all away from home within the opening five fixtures. Now they also play um, teams like Brighton, Wolves where it looks very likely they'll keep clean sheets but I just worry about some of those away fixtures that Arsenal have right at the start of the season. So is an Arsenal defender essential to have in the opening five? Or should we maybe be targeting Arsenal defenders from maybe game week six onwards? Maybe that is the way to go instead. I'm still very much undecided here, though. It could be Gavardio. I could go for a Saliba or Gabriel. We'll see as the next weeks go on where I feel I might want to go. But for the rest of the defence, it's looking a little bit stronger, a little bit more locked in for those four. 4.5 million defenders because we've got Mikalenko first of all um, who I think looks really, really good, actually. Second most clean sheets in the league last season with 13 clean sheets. That's joint with Man City. He is cheaper and has more attacking threat than the likes of Branthwaite and Tarkovsky, who are quite strangely kind of priced at 5 million. Mikolenko absolutely nailed when fit. He played, uh, he, well, he missed the first few games of the season and the last few games of the season, but aside from that, played everything. Uh, he can be rotated in game week two and four, where he has those difficult fixtures away versus Spurs and Villa. We've got a bench rotation defender for that purpose. After that, Minkalenko has great fixtures just for Ever. It, the great fixtures just go on and on and on for Everton. Really nice start to the season. And after that, they play kind of all of the difficult fixtures uh, all at the same time kind of thing. Uh, Konza is another player you could go for potentially here. I think Mikolenko and Konza have a similar fixture difficulty pattern. So if you're planning the same kind of rotations, then Mikolenko and Konza don't really work in the same team because they play their difficult fixtures at the same time as one another. So in general, I think I do prefer Mikolenko to Konza. 
better defense, better attacking potential, and probably better bonus point potential as well, with uh, Aston Villa having a lot of their bonus points concentrated in the forward areas of the pitch. Everton don't have that same issue. I'm sure they wish they did. But next defender is going to be Lewis Dunk. Brighton, six clean sheets last season. Not amazing. But with Fabian Herzler coming in as the new manager, playing a slightly more defensive and possession-based game, there could be a few more clean sheets. Of course, for Brighton, there is no European distraction this year, which really damaged them last year. And with Lewis Dunk, we know he always gets a couple of goals per season as well. In fact, he had some of the best attacking data for defenders last season. 3.15 xG and 2.24 xA, expected assists. Only six players did better than that in the defensive position last season. And those players were Porro, Trent, Trippier, Doughty, Cash and Robertson. So we're talking super attacking fullbacks with the only defenders getting better attacking data than Dunk. We are literally looking at the seventh best attacking defender in the Premier League using last season's data. And it's kind of consistent. We know Dunk is an aerial threat. We know he likes to play a long pass as well, a knock-on. He has so many avenues where he can potentially get goals. Not in the same way as a Salah or a Haaland, but still, for a defender, pretty decent as well. So, we've got arguably the biggest attacking threat uh, centre-back, I suppose, in the league. But, I should say... This could also be Livermento. Livermento also works in this position for the rotations if Trippier were to leave Newcastle and Livermento became the main starting 4.5 right back for Newcastle, which could be pretty handy. But overall, guys, we have gone pretty cheap in the defensive areas. Defenders scoring really, really low last season. And as we've kind of mentioned before, defenders seem to be not getting as many points. So it's better to spend more money on the attack. And also the new bonus point system is a little bit more punishing for defenders as well. So not super keen on spending too much on the likes of, you know, getting Gvardiol and Gabriel and Trent. I don't want them all, you know. I, I think it's better to spend your money in the attacking positions. And with Salah and Haaland in this team, we certainly have spent a lot of money in the forward positions. But we've got to move on to that exact man, Mo Salah. Great opening fixtures. The only nailed Liverpool attacker as of this moment. I know some people will speculate that Gakpo or Darwin or Jota or Diaz are going to start. But the real answer is we don't know, other than Salah, which is really, really useful. No international football for Salah over the summer, which is very, very nice to secure his minutes even further. So we've got a nailed man on penalties, been reliable for years, and actually may benefit from the new bonus point system as he takes a lot of shots on target. And guys, if you want to learn more about how Salah will benefit from the bonus points section, as well as comparing him to the likes of Saka, Palmer, Foden, and many more of those expensive midfielders please go check out my midfielders video we put a lot of work into that video and it's going to give you exactly the reason why I am so keen to get Salah into my team because he dominates so many of the uh, the kind of numbers and criteria we're looking for an FPL pick um, but yeah you'll find all about that uh, in that video and a quick break for the question of the day guys is anyone else out there going for Haaland and Salah in their team am I the only person thinking about going for this strategy I would love to know I feel like I'm a little bit on my own most people be seem to be Salah or Haaland not really many people going for both. Let me know if that's you as well. And also, remember to like and subscribe. Massively appreciated all of the support on the channel. Anthony Gordon is the next player in this team. 11 goals and 16 assists last season was no joke. Absolutely nailed on on the wing for Newcastle with some really good opening fixtures, starting off with Southampton. And if Trippier leaves, as we kind of mentioned earlier, Trippier rumoured to be leaving Newcastle, then Gordon's actually going to be taking some of those set pieces as well, which could be um, very, very useful for him and give him more avenues to get those FPL points. But I think we all know right now that Gordon is a really nice pick at 7.5 million. Eberechi Eze is another nice pick. 11 goals and 5 assists last season in quite a lot less minutes. Should be nailed on for penalties. All set pieces is the talisman of the Crystal Palace attack. And Crystal Palace, even though they did lose Elise, they seem to be signing quite smartly. Kamada has come into the, to the team. Uh, Edwards potentially joining as well um, from Portugal. So I think this could be uh, actually fine for Eze. I think he could continue to do really well. 7 million really nice price tag for him. Uh, again, he's going to be another one of those players who is really going to benefit from the new bonus point system.
system, which leaves one last spot in the midfield, and it's going to be Unkunku. Now, Unkunku, I've spoken about before on this channel and on social media. I think he genuinely could be a game breaker at 6.5 million, a cheat code of FPL. And I think people have forgotten just how good he is because he really is a phenomenal player. And we've seen actually comments from the new Chelsea manager, Maresca, has been super impressed by Nkunku, kind of signal, uh, singling him out as someone who is really impressed during training, even suggesting he can play as a number nine for Chelsea as well. So listed as a midfielder in FPL, but could be a 6.5 million striker in real life, benefiting from clean sheet points and extra points from, from uh, goals, even though, you know, in FPL, he's a midfielder. So this could be unreal. Uh, it looks like he actually suits the new Chelsea system a little bit more than even the likes of Cole Palmer. And that's not me saying that Nkunku is going to score more points than Palmer necessarily, but... Uh, I think Nkunku certainly is going to benefit from the new system where Palmer, I think, will maybe not benefit as much from this system. Now, if you are worried about Nkunku and his injury issues that he's had since joining Chelsea, then that is completely fine. And I understand that a lot of people don't like to take risks on those injury-prone players. And that's absolutely fine. My point of view is that people said the exact same thing about Isaac, Eze, Elise, uh, Diogo Jota last season. And the key is to own these players at the right moment because if you own them when they're not injured then and they score really really well well that's all you're looking for you're looking for players to get you the most FPL points and Nkunku when he's fit has the ability to do that particularly if he's playing as a central striker at 6.5 million for one of the best attacking teams in the league it's all good in the hood. So really, really like this. I think if it, things don't quite go right with the likes of Eze and Nkunku, they're also at a really nice price point. And I'm looking at a few 6.5 to 7 million midfielders that I could potentially replace Eze and Nkunku with if things don't go right. Uh, Bailey at Aston Villa is probably top of my list at the moment, but there's also Umbermo, Kudus, Garnacho, Gibbs White at Forest looks quite good. Neto uh, after Wolves' fixtures turn around a little bit. And Roberts at 5 million for Aston Villa as well. So I think there are escape routes. If there is injuries, you know, I think it's going to be fine. But it's just a small risk. And if, if you get enough points to make up for the fact that you're maybe forced into a transfer in a few weeks' time or a few months' time, it could be months, then I think it's worthwhile. I think it's very much worthwhile if you can get those points. Uh, up front, guys, Erling Haaland, of course. Reliable captain option every single week. Standout captain option in game week two where he plays Ipswich at home. I would love to captain Haaland in game week two. I really would. Another player fully rested over the summer. Back in forward fitness. We're going to be starting the season alongside De Bruyne. So a lot of last season, he was either not playing with De Bruyne uh, or he was kind of not fully fit after that injury around January, December, January time. And now he's going to be hopefully back to his best. And despite all of that last season, we actually saw Haaland with more XG last season than he had the previous season where he broke the Premier League goal scoring record. So he could, I'm just putting that out there. He could be on for 37, 38, 39 goals this year. I've seen stranger things happen in football. Uh, but guys, of course, with Haaland, if it doesn't work out and you find that you've got too much money invested in him, you don't have to keep him forever. And it's much easier to sell a Haaland than it is to buy a Haaland. And downgrading Haaland to Watkins around game week five or six is definitely an option for you if you do go for him. The rest of the forwards look pretty decent as well. Isaac, no European football, penalties, a fantastic player and the first name on every team sheet I've made. I think, guys, if you watch any other uh, fantasy football content creators, what you will notice is that everyone has Isaac. That's the one thing we all seem to agree on, uh, is that Isaac is just an absolute must-have at 8.5 million. Incredible underlying numbers, actually better than Watkins per start. It's just that Isaac played less minutes last season due to rotation with the likes of Callum Wilson, but we don't think that's going to happen going forward. And our final forward is Chris Wood. Now, with Jao Pedro potentially injured and missing the preseason tour for Brighton, I started looking at some alternatives and Wood looked fantastic. Only behind Haaland, Watkins and Isaac when we're looking at points per start in the forward position. So is Wood the fourth best forward in the game? Can he compete with the likes of Ollie Watkins? Well, per start, potentially. 
Um, 0.58 expected goals per 90 is really, really good. Actually better than Watkins. And Forrest have an amazing run of fixtures to start off the season. I mean, Bournemouth, Southampton, Wolves. It's really, really nice. Now, I think there is some small rotation risk, maybe some small minutes risk, but Wood did seem to nail on his place, his spot in the starting 11 at the end of last season with some fantastic performances. And he's a great price too. Six million. Really, really good. I think there are some potential uh, escape routes from the six million price point in the forward position as well. Jao Pedro, who we mentioned earlier, Muniz, Adam Armstrong. There's some nice options there. So with that first 11 done, let's have a look at the bench where we have made a few changes. Paulson is the first player on the bench. Uh, am I the first person to ever have two players from New Zealand in their fantasy team? Yes, Paulson and Wood, two Kiwis in my team. It's not very often you get to say that. Uh, he's the new young Bournemouth goalkeeper showing bags of potential, considered one of the best players in the A-League last season, despite his young age. And I think there is some potential for him to take advantage of the uncertain goalkeeper situation at Bournemouth, but probably not. There's a chance, but, you know, it's probably not going to happen. The real point here is at 0.3% owned, he's not really at risk of a price drop, unlike a player like Turner, who is the third choice goalkeeper at Nottingham Forest. And as soon as people realise that, you know, there's going to be millions and millions of people owning Turner and selling Turner. Um, I know that's maybe not such a great idea, but a lot of people are not as experienced playing FPL and will waste transfers selling. Turner when they realise that he's not going to play. So that's going to cause price drops for Turner and I think Paulson is less likely to get those price drops. Uh, Robinson is also on my bench here, rotates really well with Mikalenko and Dunk, plays Leicester in game week two, Ipswich in three, Fulham with 10 clean sheets last season. That was a joint fourth, really nice. It's kind of as good as Liverpool, for example. Uh, can they keep it up without Paulinha? I guess that remains to be seen. Uh, also, Robinson, super nailed on. Six assists last season. Decent amount of creativity. We like him a lot. We've got Wout Face. Face Fass. Uh, again, I'm kind of scared of price drops from the most popular 4 million picks, such as Harwood Bellis. So Leicester, probably the best newly promoted team. Can they keep some clean sheets this season? Probably. Uh, also scored twice last, scene, uh, last season, did Fass. So he's an emergency defender. I think his fixtures are better from a uh, defensive point of view than an attacking point of view. Fulham and Crystal Palace in there. There is some potential for some clean sheets, but typically I'm not going to use Fass or any of my 4 million defenders very often. It's going to be Robinson coming in uh, and rotating. And we've got Harry Winks. I still haven't found another 4.5 million midfielder who is nailed on. Everyone else seems to be rotation risk or it looks like their club is going to be replacing them soon. So yeah, Winks is the best I've got right now. If anyone can find anything, great. I can't, um, but yeah, he's, just, he's about as good as you get. But guys, that is the, the uh, team. Uh, add some closing notes. Uh, captain is going to be Salah, obviously, against Ipswich. Vice captain is going to be Haaland against Chelsea. Game week two, it will then be, uh, it'll be there, then be uh, Haaland against Ipswich. So we're just going to keep captaining players against Ipswich, basically. Uh, the big question is, is it worth it to have both Salah and Haaland? What are you sacrificing? Now, if you downgrade, you know, Salah to a Saka, that means you can get Nkunku up to a Foden. So that kind of means it's a question of Salah and Nkunku versus Foden and Saka if you wanted to keep Haaland. And when I look at that, I think, you know, if you get the best captain option for game week one and a real high potential asset like Nkunku, who could potentially compete with a Foden and a Saka, then actually, you know, this could be better. It could be better to do things this way. Uh, if you downgrade Haaland, of course, to maybe a Watkins, for example, you can do a little bit more with that money. But it's mostly just going to be a case of upgrading your goalkeeper or upgrading your defenders, maybe bringing in um, some more expensive uh, defenders, Trent, uh, an Arsenal defender. You could do that with your uh, money, potentially. But again, is it smart to spend all that money in the defensive position? Is it actually better to maybe spend more money in attack? Well, in my opinion, yes. But different people are going to have different views on that. And that might be a play style thing as well. Um, the other way is you can maybe upgrade Chris Wood if you downgraded a Salah or a Haaland. But again, there isn't really anyone who I've looked at who convinces me are significantly better than Wood. It seems like Haaland, Isaac, Wood, Watkins, and, you know, Jao Pedro, you probably put in that conversation as well. 
seem like the best attacking assets at the moment. I don't really like the look of many other forwards outside of that. So therefore, Wood is just as good as any 7, 7.5, 8 million forwards you could find. Habits, maybe? I don't know. I don't think Wood is really that much worse if he can continue his form from last season. So, yeah, I really, really like this team a, a lot. I hope you do too. I'll be interested to hear what your thoughts are on it. But we are actually going to get our thoughts uh, from someone or maybe should I say something? Yes, guys, the Fantasy Football Hub My Team tool is back for a new season, ready to rate our Game Week 1 teams. And now, guys, if you do want to check this out, you can get your team rated immediately and for free using the link at the top of uh, the description of this video. So definitely go and have a look. I think it is worth getting a second opinion on your FPL team. And often it's hard to get an expert's kind of advice on your whole team. It's, it's difficult to get that. But with this tool, you know, you can just get a quick rating from a, what a tool that works so closely with the data. It's constantly learning and adapting that it can give you a genuinely good feedback on your team, which is really, really handy. I'm going to show you a little bit more uh, here. But guys, looking at my team, we've got a team rating of 90% at the moment. I think anything above 90% is pretty decent i would like to get to 95 percent, but this ai tool is currently predicting that it's not going to be henderson in goal for crystal palace but it's actually going to be johnston so if we'd make this swap and go johnston instead and click make transfer at the bottom we can now see that our team rating has been updated to 95 percent, and i'd be keen to see if any of you guys can beat 95 percent, because i've not seen too many uh team ratings that are quite that high so i'm pretty happy that i've managed to get there with a salah and harland team so assuming we get the right crystal palace starting goalkeeper this team suddenly looks really really good and we can see some of our predictive points here we can also go we by week to see you know maybe switching the captain's armband to Haaland in uh, in game week two for example and you can kind of see that Haaland is predicted to be the best scoring player for game week two interestingly I found uh, in, and when I moved to game week three on this Salah's actually predicted more points than Haaland in game week three so maybe that's something to keep an eye on what's also great about this tool is if you're not super happy with your team rating or you just want some suggestions you can also click on the AI transfers button at the top here and what this does is it looks at your team it calculates your budget and things like that and then it'll just make some suggestions for you now this works every single game week but it also works during the preseason where it assumes you have unlimited transfers so it's made three suggested transfers for me if I was to remove Henderson and buy Raya, uh, remove Robinson and buy Robertson, then I could, Robinson and Robertson, that's easy to say, uh, I could actually improve my potential points for the opening run of fixtures. But of course, how am I going to do that? Well, Gordon down to Semenyo is suggesting is the way to free up a little bit of budget whilst not really losing too much because Semenyo looking through this is actually predicted pretty similar points to Gordon so it's suggested downgrade Gordon to Semenyo and suddenly you can improve your points potential by bringing in an Arsenal uh, defensive asset and a Liverpool defensive asset so Guys, this tool is very, very flexible. It can do a lot of things. It is free to try out, so there's no reason to not give it a go. And I've left a link in the description for you to do so. Also, guys, if you do want to go for the full subscription of Fantasy Football Hub and get full access to all of their tools, it is currently 50% off uh, to get your uh, membership. And they will give you your money back if you do not win your mini league. They are so confident that using their tools, you will win your mini league, that they will give you your subscription money back for the season if you if, if you don't win so <laughs> again no reason to not try it out i love these tools you guys know i love these tools they are the absolute best uh, on the market and all serious fbl managers are now using uh, the tools just like you've seen uh, the display today so check it out go for it you guys are gonna love it but that's it from me today make sure you do drop a like and subscribe if you haven't done already appreciate you guys watching once again and i will see you for another video tomorrow see you later mates bye, -bye.